Obviously, church, religion part, we were in a meeting in my father's church and I was there sitting. I have this kind of thing prompted inside of me. Victor, go and announce your friends and the people that Sylvia is pregnant. So I stand up, went to the front and said, dad, I have something to share with the church. He said, what do you want to share? I want to tell them that Sylvia is pregnant. My father looked at me with surprise. Is she pregnant? No, dad, no yet. This is a statement of faith. He said, are you crazy? Okay, go ahead. He didn't know what was going to happen. So I stand, stand up front about 600 people. And I told them, well, I want to announce to you that Sylvia is pregnant because the majority of the people know everyone will start clapping and celebrating. Till one of my friends asked me, and Victor, when the baby is due? And I said, June of next year. There was a moment of silence and then some, what you would call in Argentine term, really sarcastic laughing. And one of my friends said, oh, Victor, Sylvia is like an elephant, 17 months of pregnancy. So it was this kind of environment of unbelief. So I challenged the people, said, look, if in 17 months I'm not here with my son, with Gonzalo, presenting it to all of you, okay, I will say that faith is an empty kind of game. But if I'm here, all of you will have to repent and you will have the opportunity to believe in something different. So we wait and I think that one, a whole kind of experience with my wife going into that journey. I think that we know the day that we conceived Gonzalo, but Gonzalo born June 17. So 17 months later, I was able to be presenting my son as our own journey of faith, breaking with the memory, breaking with the past, breaking with a curse that was in, inside of the family and being able to find an answer that for medicine at that moment was impossible, but for God, in reality, nothing is impossible. The other thing that you discover in the process of faith, and this is also part of the story, that, you know, is a word that is quite frequently used in, in, in Christian forums is that is the grace of God. And the grace of God is a gift, is that because God loves you so much that he wants to give you a gift in your life. He wants to intervene in your life and tackle the impossibles, tackle that moments in your life when you are confronted with a kind of a brick wall and you, can't, you don't have any answer and moving, and it's sometimes when faith opens up the possibility of the frame of your life to have a miracle. And that miracle is a gift. You have a gift in your hands. And gifts also enable you to be able to give others your gift. So some, some, a few years ago, we have a couple. Uh, but a friend of us called us because she had a couple that were working with them in Deutsche Bank. Veronica and Fabrizio. He was an Italian, she was a Colombian. And they tried for a long time. I know I don't remember how many years to have babies. They were not able to have babies. And my, my friend, just to give them some encouragement, told them about our history, our story. So, okay, we went to their house to have dinner. We were there, we talked with them. We shared them our experience. And we pray for them. So that thing, a few months later, we receive a message saying that she was pregnant. Wow, an amazing kind of thing. We have a gift, you give the other the gift. And then they call us when the baby born and said, look, we are sorry. We wanted to give the, our son kind of a name that, and we were thinking about giving the same name of your son, but then finally, we decided that we will give it the name of one of um, our grandparents. So 
we put the name Lorenzo. So we start laughing and we said, well, it doesn't matter that it's not Gonzalo. Lorenzo is our surname. So there are in the world many babies that have named Lorenzo or Gonzalo or Melissa, our daughter, just because we were able to give this part of the gift that we, we received from God a gift, we are able to give that gift to the others. So this is part of the story and the journey of faith. The other thing in terms of a foundation that for me is the most precious gift that God gave to us, that is the possibility of changing the foundations of our life and looking into the future, not to be a repetition of the past, but to be something completely different. When I was in university, studying sociology, um, part of that studies was about publicity and advertising. And one of the professors uh, mm, invited us, a, few, a, few, a small group of five of us, to have dinner with him. So we went to have dinner with him. He said, look guys, you know, the real art of publicity is not just to present a product, it's not just the uh, words that you're going to use or the techniques that you're going to use. The real art of publicity is to be able to establish a connection between the intrinsic foundational dissatisfaction of people with your product. And if you are able to do that, you win the market. And he started giving us ex examples of that one. So then he told us, well, I want you to tell me from where this dissatisfaction, from where this foundation is operating in people. So I went back home, start thinking. The next morning I woke up, I was still thinking, what is the answer that I'm going to give the professor? And then came prompt a word in a, a question in my mind. And the question was, Victor, what was the first thing that you did when you born? So I start thinking, as much as I know, I don't remember that things, but is what my, my mother told me or what I was looking in TV and that one, I cry possible. Do you know why you cry when you're born? Why I cry when I'm born. So I start looking to different things. And I discovered that you cry because of two reasons. One is that from when your mother starts having constructions, you know, there is a disruption to the flow of blood in the umbilical cord. So in a certain way, you start lacking oxygen. So when you are in the birth canal, it's a critical moment and the doctors are really kind of concerned of that moment. Because in reality, when you're in the birth canal, you are choking. So you're lacking oxygen. So if you stay too longer there, you will have brain damage. Well, in a certain way, the doctor says that all of us will have a certain level of brain damage. But that is 
part of the thing. So that is why then they are really concerned about that one. And when you born, those who are my age, we were stimulated to make our first inspiration of oxygen, of, of our first breathing exercise, a little violence with a little spunking in, in our butts. Uh, today is a more gentle thing. They give you massage and that one. But when you make your first inspiration, it's like you have like an internal expansion or implosion of your lungs. They inflate quite violently. And that is to be able to expand in the thoracic ca cavity and to break up a membrane that was covering and protecting the lungs. And in that moment, your, the pain that you will have in your exercise of breathing will be just like a heart attack or even higher level of pain. And in that moment that you make your first inspiration, your old thoracic area and abdominal area open up and you start feeling hunger. And hunger in a baby is one of the most extreme pains that you will have in all your life. That is why a baby cry. A baby don't cry because he's hungry. He's, he's crying because of the pain that hunger produced. So from that foundation and that first experience in our life, in our more deep foundation of memory, pain and need come together. And that makes us selfish from the first kind of point of our life. And it doesn't matter how much I we try, every time that there is a time of need, my needs become my priority. And when you come to the teachings of Jesus, generosity and the needs of others have to be your priority. So how can I really break that memory is to have an experience with God where you realize that God will take care of your needs. God will be there helping you while you're working, while you're doing your work and that one, that you will not have lacking in your home. And that is an experience of faith that also break that patterns of memory. And the other one is that going deeper in the moment of your conception, and sorry for about talking so clearly about these things, is that your father ejaculate nearly 50 million sperms in your mother in an electrical chemical environment that will kill the majority of the sperms. When one of the sperms reach the egg, there is another electrochemical change that make the egg not being able to penetrate again. Sometimes it happens, you have twins, you have identical twins, different kind of experience, but they are not the normal. So our moment of conception, our moment of bringing, coming back to life or coming, coming into the possibility of life is surrounded by death. And there is an expression from God that said that God partake of flesh and blood. He sent Jesus to the world so that he can rescue us from the fear of death in which we were captive all our life. We are living a time today in the world where, you know, the stimulation of the fear and the fear of death is coming to us. Where I know that there are people today hearing from us in the Ukraine is a really kind of environment, a terrible one to be, but all that memories can be there. And the promise of God is that he can change that foundation, putting in, our, in us a new foundation of love, a foundation of eternal life, a foundation of a promise that can change whatever is in our memory. So I hope that these stories encourage you and take me to the place where there is the most amazing gift that is from God. Something that probably a lot of us in this Zoom, YouTube, and different platforms experience, that is the gift of salvation, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of a possibility of a line extended by God so that I can come to him. Not to a religious experience, not just about thinking or believing in God, just having a relationship with him, an experience of faith that can take you into a path where your life and the life of those who are surrounding you can change and be transformed. And that is what God says, that he loved you so much and he loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son 
so that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. So when I think about different religions and different philosophies and all the different answers that they try to give to the questions of life, to how we change situations and things, the only one that proposed to be born again, to have a new identity or to embrace a new identity is the proposal of God through Jesus. So, because I received that gift, that gift of salvation, that in my process and my crisis in a teenager questioning everything, and then finally discovering that the proposal of God is real, that a relationship with him is possible, that he can inspire, inspire me and guide me to break the patterns of memory, the curses that I'm bringing, whatever is the trauma that I have before, that I can look into the future and make steps to change, not just only because of my efforts or my self-discipline, but because he put in me a new foundation, that foundation of love, that foundation of forgiveness, that foundation of opportunity that only can come to your life through Jesus Christ. And this is a journey. It's not just a moment, but you start a journey making a decision in which direction you want to go. So I want to encourage you today to make a decision, a personal decision, to try God, if you want to put it there, that what God is saying is true. What God is, is proposing is true, that he, his gift available to you as it was for me and it was and it is to many people that I meet in every day that you can embrace his gift of salvation for a complete different life that whatever the situation that you are facing whatever the moment of impossibilities that you are facing God is there ready to extend a hand to come closer to you to make habitation in your in your life and to connect heaven and earth in a way that can change whatever circumstances is there. And that thing starts with a personal decision. And it's the personal decision to say, Jesus, I want you in my life. God, I want you the gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. God, you make an amazing sacrifice. You give your only begotten son so that through that expression of love, I can come closer to you and have a relationship with you. And because we have a mouth and we have a tongue that have been given to us to be able to express our beliefs, to express what we want to happen, God is saying that if you confess with your mouth and you pray to him, he is ready to respond to you and to come to your life. So the simplicity of this one is that to make a prayer and to say, Jesus, come to my life, come to my heart. God, I accept your offer of an amazing gift because I want a life that can change and a life that also can change the life of others. God, I don't want to be in the same direction of the world, hating, be living in fear, living in selfishness, not being able to bring goodness into the future of my life. I don't want to find myself 
in a place of defeat at the end of my life saying I couldn't change really. God is really there to give you the opportunity of salvation and to bring change and transformation to your life. So where you are, you know, I don't want to impose the words to you. You can make it with your own words, but I want to lead you in a prayer. We call it a prayer of salvation. We call it a prayer crying out to God to come to our lives. So if you are there and you want to make this prayer, just make my words your words and speak directly to God because he's listening and he's ready to answer to you. God, uh, thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for the gift of the opportunity to come to a moment in our life where we can reconnect with you because you make first the journey to come to us and offer us the gift of salvation. Thank you for Jesus and his sacrifice in the cross. Thank you for that extraordinary, amazing, unbelievable to an extent expression of love. And I want to receive that gift of new life that you are offering me. Thank you because you forgive me from my sins and from my past and you open to me the opportunity of a life that is different from the memories that I'm carrying, from the environment where I am. And God, I say yes to your offer. I say yes to your gift. I decide today to accept Jesus as my savior and to receive it as the Lord of my life. God, I don't know if I will be able to follow every one of your teachings, but I know that with your assistance, with your love, with your forgiveness, with your peace, with your mercy, with your power, I will be able to do it. And I do this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much for listening. It has been a pleasure to listen to myself again with some of the stories. Reignite my faith. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victor. Well, that was very inspirational what you shared tonight. Very encouraging. And if you prayed that prayer with Victor, please let us know. Contact us on our phone line, plus 44-794-355-0287. Or go to our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you will find the Salvation Prayer link. You can click on that. Let us know that you've made that commitment. And you'll find other things on that website to help you in your walk with God. So thank you, Victor. And I'm going to hand over to George now. I believe he has some questions for you. Thank you, George. Thank you, Alan, and uh, muchas gracias, uh, mi amiga, por tu historia. <laughs> <laughs> gracias, George. Muchas. Now then, Victor, fantastic stories. Thank you very much. But um, you mentioned there at the end about the gift of salvation, the gift of, re of um, forgiveness. When was it that you yourself cried out, shall we say, to God to get that gift? Uh, my first time was when I was, I think, three years old. But that was, in a certain way, lost in translation or lost in the memories. And then was probably when I was 14 years old. Excellent. And uh, how did that experience happen for you? How did it come about? Well, as I was saying, I was questioning a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And I was questioning my own religion. And in that moment, I came, this is the God of my father. I learned about God, about my parents. So my father used to say, do you believe you can't believe in God, but you believe God? And I was in the process where I was believing in God, but I really believe God. Do I have a kind of a connection with Him personally? So that is then the moment where I decided that if God was real, have to become my God, have to become my Father, have to become my Savior. Mm -hmm. You know, that experience that I received from my parents was not enough for me. I needed my personal kind of experience with that. Now you say you were brought under up under your father's ministry. He was a, he was a minister in Argentina. Of course, Argentina is a very religious country. Uh, was there many Christians in Argentina at that time? Well, you have a strong religious background in Argentina. So mm -hmm. you have the Catholic Church, and then you have probably from the late eighteen hundreds there was a lot of missionaries coming from Europe into Latin America, and that is how 
what you would call the Protestant of the evangelical church start developing in Argentina. Mm -hmm. So, life stories live. <laughs>